completely honest, as I always am, teleprompter free, telling it like it is. I'm going to be completely honest with why I have Dr. David Duke, the former Ku Klux Klan Grand Dragon, joining us for the full hour into the next hour if he will stay with us. I think it's best to start this interview, this debate, this discussion this way. I never had people like Dr. William Pierce or David Duke on the show because I did not want to have a Jerry Springer type program or Geraldo Rivera type program. If I just wanted ratings, I could be a shock jock and, you know, be co-host with Howard Stern. I mean, literally, they've talked to me before about a slot on the Howard Stern show. That is not what I have attempted to do. And I thought bringing people on like David Duke would just stir people up. And I've always been trying to get people to transcend tribal racial systems and to have a tribe of humans based on upward mobility, based on renaissance, based on promoting ideas of quality based on systems of liberty and freedom and private property and free association. Because humans are tribal. Humans are based uh, on clans, on families, on tribes, on groups. If you didn't have that tribal system, you would never have had the Greeks or the Romans or the Aztecs or the Shoguns. No one. You have the Chinese trying to invade the Japanese. You have the Japanese invading the Chinese. You have the South Koreans hating the North Koreans. You have one African tribe attacking the other African tribe because they're across the river. And mainly, if you read human or animal psychology, Conlad, Lorenz, Desmond Morris, or any of the basic stuff, it's, it's true. The more aggressive a mammal species, the more loving and sweet it is in the den. And so... In your tribe, you're not killing each other. You love each other. If someone does attack someone for no reason, the tribe will ostracize them or kill them. But you're a predator that preys on animals. Well, as humans' population got bigger 6,000 years ago, as we become agrarian, and I'm going to go to Duke here in a moment. This is my preface. We began to wage war against each other. And to be able to go over the mountain and rob and kill the men and take the women... So much of conquest was about getting more women. Didn't matter if it was the Native Americans raiding settler villages to get their women and children or whether it was the Romans doing it. It's the same human system. And you have to demonize who you're going to loot, who you're going to steal from, who you're going to overtake, who you're going to control. And that is a human condition. It's a human attribute from those primitive times. Is it an attribute in modern times? We are sold on the idea that we need to be colorblind, love everyone, be guilty, and pay all the taxes, accept the Obamacare, turn our guns in, or we're racist. And so the Christian Western ethic of transcending tribalism and having a tribe of love and helping others that is truly transcendent and altruistic that was produced in the West, exported to the world, created modern civilization, and all the good things we have. 90% of it comes from Western culture. No one can debate that. And so the Christians promote the end of slavery, the end of serfdom in the last 300 years in Europe. It's ended worldwide, except for areas of Africa and the Middle East, where it still goes on and is cute and funny because it's not white people doing it. It's like when Muslims are you know, putting hoods on women's heads, radical Muslims, and chopping their genitals off. It's cute because it's their culture. Or when the Aztecs are chopping hearts out, it's not bad because it's a culture. But if whites have a crooked toenail, it's evil. Why is this being done? It's being done because Western culture is the dominant culture. And if you can dominate it, you dominate the world. And the eugenicists are targeting blacks, Hispanics, whites, everybody, but they're targeting whites with cultural guilt to accept the larger New World Order agenda. And I don't debate that. No one can. They're trying to ban the word master 
in colleges, master's degrees, master's in golf, has nothing to do with slavery. It's about being able to erase words and create a new dark age of ignorance. Headline Infowars.com. Yale professor, students leaving campus over racist word master. Infowars.com. Today, biggest gay lobby group in America urges schools to ban the words boy and girl, saying it's hateful. See, normal human biology is under attack. This is a scientific takeover. So, yes, there's a war on white people. But the very same liberal Ford Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation technocrats that are doing this funded Planned Parenthood, funded the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, funded the Ku Klux Klan, and created the world we see today. And that's what I'm saying. It's a spectrum where the New World Order controls all the sides, keeps us tribal, wages war against the black community from 15% illegitimacy to 87 illegitimacy, from 5% in prison to 78% in prison. I mean, just, just and, and what they've practiced on the blacks, they're doing to everybody. So I'm going to give, and I'm going to skip this network break coming up. I'm going to give Duke the floor here because I've had my five, six minutes. To, I have no idea what he's going to say, to say what he has to say, but here's what I'm getting at. The political correctness is such an open cult of ending freedom, of ending true liberalism, of ending free speech, and creating class warfare, infusing racial consciousness into class warfare, and whipping up giant exported populations to break and further destroy the West in an act of genocide against the ideas of the West. That the reason I would have a David Duke on is not that I agree with what he overall is doing, but because he is the mirror image of the spectrum that's promoted by Mecha, La Raza, the black supremacist groups and all the rest of it. And so he should have a show on MSNBC right next to Al Sharpton because they are two people basically promoting the same thing at the end of the day. And, and he may disagree with that. I don't think David Duke believes what he's doing is bad in the final equation. He believes he's a hero, a white knight on shining armor fighting against uh, the globalist cultural jihad or or corporate overwrite uh, of civilization. And undoubtedly, that is happening. But I see humanity being paved over by the Hollywood culture of death across the board. I see blacks targeted by the left, who I have been around privately when they say we hate black people. So there's a paradox here where the truth is the left needs David Duke to point at so that they don't actually get the scrutiny and people actually realize these people are a thousand times, if you believe David Duke is wicked, a thousand times more wicked than he is. Now, David, we'll do the whole next hour, too, if you want, so we can each have five, six, seven minutes at a you know turn here going over this. But that's where I come from here, and, and, and that's where this world is going I want to get people outside the box to see the prison economy, how they've divided us into different groups to play the part of the referee. So David Duke of DavidDuke.com joins us. If you want me to do your bio, I think everybody knows you're a doctor, PhD in history, authored a bunch of best-selling books, and then been a grand dragon wizard, uh, and uh, all the rest of it. I'm not going to start making jokes about that, but uh, thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope we can have a good debate here. Well, I, I hope so. And uh, if you give me a chance to talk, that'll be great. And I look forward to a real discussion about some of the basic issues, because I would like to get down to the bottom today about who the real elite is in this country and in the world that is truly, as you say, and it's totally true, they're an enemy of all mankind. And I think for them, and you've even said this as well in the first part of the show, you said they want to, in some ways, go against your pen peoples because they want to control the West and the power of the West. And I think that's why we're in these wars in the Middle East, really wars for Israel and wars for the globalist uh, powers. Uh, but I'm not, a, I'm not a, uh, a carbon copy or a mirror image of Al Sharpton. Uh, the truth is that there is a racism that dominates America, a supremacism. But it's racism, vicious hate propaganda and racism against the European American. And as far as eugenics or as far as uh, b limiting births, 
the real population explosion, black people have a much higher birth rate than whites. Mexicans have a much higher birth rate than even African-Americans. European Americans have about a 1.6 birth rate, which means we're losing a quarter of our people every generation. The population explosion in the world is an African explosion. The United Nations just recently put out a uh, statistic showing that in Africa by 2050, there'll be 1.3 billion Africans. And that's almost entirely because of the massive birth rate. So I don't believe that these globalists are intentionally trying to uh, limit the birth rates of, African Amer of Africans or African-Americans or whatever. The truth is that the only people on the planet who are losing their numbers, and of course, it's only white nations that are being massively invaded by immigration, which the globalists and the Zionists have set up and dominated in the United States, Canada, Australia, every European nation today is under attack. And I believe that's because our people don't ha any longer have control over their, the media. They have no longer control over the banking system, the Federal Reserve Bank. They no longer have control over our foreign policy or even our politics. The biggest contributors in politics are absolutely Zionists. And I can prove that and document that. And the Federal Reserve, we've had three decades now, a Federal Reserve chairman. In fact, I have a graphic uh, that I uploaded uh, to your site today. Hopefully your engineer can put it up with the Federal Reserve, the Fed. And over the last three decades, every Federal Reserve chairman and vice chairman has been a Jewish supremacist, a Jewish Zionist. There's no argument about that. that not a single non-Jewish head of the Federal Reserve banking system. And that is the ultimate banking power in the world. You want to talk about international finance? There's no more powerful force in the world than the Federal Reserve. Now, these are all Jewish activists. I don't say every Jew, and I agree with you, that not every Jew is acting against European Americans or against people of the world. But we do know that Zionism is absolutely a Jewish supremacist phenomenon. It is a racist phenomenon. They kicked 600,000 people out of their land, stole their land, have violated them, murdered them, tortured them, periodically kill thousands of uh, women and children, maim them in Israel, and they are the power. But for them to have the power, Israel wouldn't exist, and the Jewish supremacism wouldn't exist, except for the fact that the Jews basically have, and I believe this, they've taken over the American elite. Now, when I say this, this is another graphic that I've had uploaded already. I'll show you a graphic from the New York Times. Um, Mr. Brooks, David Brooks, one of their elite columnists, in which he literally talks about the, he talks about an article or a thing called The Chosen getting in. And he literally speaks about a Jewish taking over of the American elite and how the Jews have become the American elite. So if you want to talk about the elite in this country, I believe they are tribalists. And I'm not an image, I'm not a mirror image of Al Sharpton because it is, I believe it's my people that are going to become a minority in the world. Now, I respect all people. And if I were president of the United States, I wouldn't be having this globalist agenda. And I certainly wouldn't be invading these countries uh, in these wars for Israel and Iraq and Afghanistan. I certainly wouldn't be, be supporting the Goldman Sachs of the world. That's the biggest predator the most evil predator international bank in the world. It is a Zionist institution, and it not only controls international banking or has a great effect of it, it li literally picks who's going to be in our Treasury Department, basically, and the people who, who have the power in the Federal Reserve. It is a Zionist operation, and it's also the chief corporate contributor. Take a look at the Goldman Sachs, uh, again, the, the the, uh, this, what I've showed you, it's the chief corporate contributor of both Democrats and Republicans in the United States. Of David, America. I won't debate you there. I'll just interject for one minute, then you can come back for two minutes, then we'll continue. Sure. But let me just interject. When I say mirror image, I meant from his perspective, he promotes all the race-based stuff. From your white perspective, that's going on. And I'm saying the rhetoric out of Mecha, La Raza, La Raza means the race. You promote stuff that's race-based. And so that's what I'm trying to get at here. And when I talk about eugenics, Margaret Sanger, Planned Parenthood, was set up, in her words, I can pull up her letters if you want, saying that it was to target black people. 52% of black people are never born in this country. I know there's giant third world explosions going on in Africa. That's two separate things. I was saying, and I'm not saying the eugenicists are being totally successful or totally in control, 
I was getting at, how do you square Margaret Sanger, Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, awards to Hitler, getting awards from Hitler, pen pals, the left loves her, and I'm saying the left is really a bunch of shadow, control freak, ultimate racist who've gone in and taken over the black community as a beta test and ruined it and pushed every weaponized media form you can imagine and the whole gangster culture. I mean, who can doubt that paying women not to have men in the house literally destroyed the black community as we know it compared to what it was? Uh, but there's nobody in America that has, has talked about that more than I have. I, I really well, I was unaware of that. I don't follow a lot of what you have to say, so I thought, so just seeing snippets on the news, we'd have you on. But, uh, I mean, how do you respond to that? Well, I, I respond this way, that I've talked against that. I, I really believe, and I truly believe, that blacks, as whites, are victims of this Zio control over our media. It's an incredibly destructive culture. They push drugs on our kids. We've seen the black family totally devastated over the last four or five decades. And that's because of the change of the culture. But who runs Hollywood? It's not European-American Christians, my friend. Every one of the 10 largest Hollywood studios of movies and television are all Jewish controlled. I can give you the names. We have a graphic here of Jewish pundits, like at the Los Angeles Times, who is in the middle of Hollywood, where he boasts that Jews totally run Hollywood. And in the article, he lists all the leaders of the Hollywood networks. And he says he's insulted when people try to argue, I mean, even Jews argue that Jews don't control Hollywood. He's proud of it. And he goes on to say, I don't care if people think we're running the Federal Reserve, international banking, Wall Street, the media and government. All I care is we keep on running them. Now, if uh, this is what they say. I'm quoting what they say, so they call me anti-Semitic. I don't believe I'm anti-Semitic. I believe I am for the rights of all people, including the European people. Now, what's going on in this country? And Donald Trump's talking about it. And that's why he's got so much popularity. That was right? my next question. What do you think of Donald Trump? Well, I don't know if I can trust him because he's been involved with the Zionists and he's one of these guys in the Republican debate. We got a controlled media. We even Fox News is like a, a controlled opposition. Orwell was so great about that. And Orwell talked about the controlled opposition. And in his great book, he talks about the controlled opposition. For some reason, he named the controlled opposition Emmanuel Goldstein using two Jewish names. And I think that the Jewish extremists can set up a controlled opposition. And if you saw the debate, it was like an ambush and against Donald Trump. And it was because he was talking about the fact that European Americans are losing the right. The people who built this great country, who gave us the foundations of our Bill of Rights, all the things you believe about are being replaced. And, and here's the problem. I'm, again, I believe in having a kind nation toward all people, supporting all people. I, I am not for any sort of exploitation. I'll give an example. The media is so powerful, they can just make main monikers. I have never, ever uh, been a white supremacist. I believe in equal rights for all people. I've always stated that position, even back in my Klan days. I was a young man who back in the 1960s, as a young teen, I began to realize that European Americans were going to be a minority in this country. Everybody else, when I talked about that, they said, oh, that's baloney. That's never going to happen. And we're seeing it right now. We are slated to be a minority. Biden tells the, uh, these ambassadors from South America we're going to be a minority, how, minority, how great it is. We're going to be a minority. This is a part of the Jewish divide and conquer strategy. And it is a tribal thing. I don't think there's nothing wrong with a Jew or any other people on the planet, uh, African-American or Mexican-American, anybody be, to be uh, ashamed of their heritage. You're not proud of their heritage. You want to preserve it. That is a very natural, healthy thing. But there is something wrong when people are trying to destroy other peoples and exploit other peoples. And that's really what's going on in this country. Well, right I want now. to get your views uh, on that because you say you're not a white supremacist. What is your view of Adolf Hitler? Because I have, not even in mainline history books, but the Nuremberg trials and a lot of German writings as well. I mean, the Nazis really were a weird death cult. They really were into all sorts of weird ceremonial magic. Uh, they really didn't think Hitler well, was I God. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, I really genuinely, and I know there's two sides to World War II, but yeah. the West funded the rise of Hitler. The West signed a secret treaty that's been basically released by the British to back Hitler in a takeover of Europe. Uh, they had Edward VIII ready to be the new king of Europe. They double-crossed, but that doesn't mean Hitler's good. It means, see, again, the West 
England, British intelligence, along with some of the U.S., was setting things up. I mean, take Prescott Bush, the head Nazi agent in the U.S., and they're playing for a coup with Smedley Butler. I mean, there's all well, this other stuff going on. Not agent in the in the United States at all. I think this is. I, I'm sorry, but I believe that the information you have there is false, and maybe it's planted by the people as this misinformation. The truth is that there's no evidence at all that Western nations supported the rise of Hitler or, or any of the Gentile establishment in America. The he was on the cover of Time magazine. My grandfather remembered hearing him in, in Dallas. They would air Times it on the radio. Not promote Adolf Hitler. And if you look at the New York Times and our media in America, even back then, the New York Times was dominant. Our Jewish publication, the Schultzbergers, had article after article every day of our lives about how evil the Germans, with a lot of lies about the Germans, too. The fact is that there was no greater, the internationalists saw no greater enemy than Germany in the Second World War. And both the Zionists on one side, Zionist Jews on one side, which influenced the West, as Charles Lindbergh pointed out, and communist Jews on the other side supported Marxism. We knew So just everything is Jews' fault. Do you really believe that? It's not Jews' fault, but you gotta understand they have they have a complete domination of our media, our academia. They have a complete All right, David Duke's our guest. If you just tuned in, we're gonna come back and uh, let you hear from him. Uh, this is unfiltered, uncensored, it's live, and well, we're gonna really start getting into the meat and potatoes. You know, we should open the phones up some in the next hour uh, if uh, David Duke stays with us so you can call in. People that disagree with him, people that agree with him. I've just tried to stay out of all this stuff over the years to try to promote free market, lower taxes, school choice, uh, sovereignty, so that people can make their own decisions. But it's clear the ruling elite in the West, whoever they are, it's a, it's a mix of groups, are pushing weaponized media where they now say the word boy and girl is hateful, ban it in schools. And it's happening. And I saw a public gender-neutral bathroom yesterday. And I had my daughters with me, and we couldn't use it. And I, I talked to my daughters about it, and they said, yeah, we don't want to go in there with other men. And I was talking to a lady about it last night. She goes, yeah, I ran into one of those now. And you go in there, and there's men in the bathroom, and, you, you, and there's guys at urinals right beside you. You know, all cultures, men and women, stay separate for a reason. That's just the way it's always been. This is an attempt. What I'm saying is it's beyond what David Duke's saying. And people freak out about what he says. It's just milk toast compared to what MTV promotes. I mean, look at these headlines. Yelp professor students leaving campus over racist word master. Educator calls for ban over the word, the racial and gender weight it carries. It's about controlling words. Biggest gay lobby group in America urges schools to ban the words boy and girl. Danish politician convicted for racism for offending Muslims. Blood money. Planned Parenthood has politicians completely paid off. Media in its pocket. California Green Party promotes free slaps for straight white men. I mean, this is just a bunch of people organizing their own weird tribes, freaking out over their sexual preference. I mean, this is society in decline. School told to call kids purple penguins because boys and girls is not inclusive to transgender. Nebraska school bans the term boys and girls to train teachers to avoid gender expressions. I mean, this is a cult where they can tell you what to believe, what to say, and how to talk and arrest you if you don't do it. These are totalitarians. And it's anti-human. And it's out of control. Let's say the government sets me up like they did David Duke. And I don't agree with a lot of what David Duke has to say. But I remember looking at his case in the news when it happened and knowing that the IRS you know, claimed that he had a tax exemption that shouldn't be tax exempt for his group. Which they're supposed to just issue the tax exemption for a political you know, organization or cultural organization. And they put him in jail for years. And now they're putting tens of thousands of conservatives, libertarians. See, first they came for the Grand Dragons. And then they came 
for the pro-gun groups. Then they came for the veterans groups. Now they didn't stand up, so then they came for your property rights group. And the emails have come out that Lois Lerner is targeting conservatives, libertarians. So the point is, if I got thrown in prison, they would say, you're going to the white area. And even if I wasn't racist against Hispanics and blacks, I'm inherently don't know who they are individually. Doesn't matter. They've been put in racial groups and have been turned into racially based organizations by the government, by design. And I think that's what I'm saying that transcends all this. Whoever the ruling elite are, and there's different power groups, they are using divide and conquer clearly to control. Don't we need to point out that the left is promoting racism and division and then not go join our own racial groups to play into their game, but transcend it and try to come together? Because they're in a race to balkanize us. That's what the elite wants. And economically, even if you want to segregate yourself, they're going to try to not let you do it. So I'm simply here really trying to have sophisticated thought. I'm not saying David Duke isn't sophisticated. I've just heard all this over and over again. And I've also experienced at the hands of the anti-Mason groups, the anti-Catholic groups, the anti-Jew groups, where they give just godlike superpowers to whoever they believe runs everything. And so, therefore, I'm Jewish because I've been successful, or I'm only successful because Jews tell me what to do and I'm on the hotline to Tel Aviv. You know, there's no discussion of, there's a bunch of diverse Jewish organizations and groups, different types of Jews, leftist Jews, right-wing Jews, Jews that criticize Israel, Jews that don't. It just all becomes one big monolithic thing. And so I really am trying to figure out what's happening here. David Duke is our guest. I've talked for about four minutes here. I'm going to throw it back to him um, so that folks, you know, see where he's coming from. All I'm saying is David Duke isn't taking over. Leftist organizations, whoever runs them, are fantastical in what they push now. I don't want to turn my guns in. I'm deeply racist. I'm against Obamacare. That's a screw job written by offshore insurance companies. I'm racist. I mean, this has been said on CNN and MSNBC. No proof. Uh, so it doesn't matter. They, they have successfully radicalized and racially based their movements. They're going with it. And I see the Democratic Party, who failed when Republicans passed the Civil Rights Act and the rest of it, who flipped and then began racially catering to minorities, running a Klan strategy, but now it's through minorities and successfully doing so. So what happens? Americans then racially divide, and then the government can then basically turn us all into a giant prison and divide and conquer us. That's where I see this going. It doesn't mean we should accept saying whites are inherently evil and should be exterminated. It doesn't mean we don't sit there and give up any white culture we have. No, no, we speak out against all those attacks. But then do we go suit up in pointed hats at the end of the day? What does that do? And then he didn't answer the question. I want you to answer this. I'll give you the floor for 10 minutes, David. But I want you to answer this question. You keep acting like there's no connection to Planned Parenthood and white supremacy and exterminist operations. That is going on. So how do you square up that behind the scenes, the Democratic Party are, I mean, a fellow Grand Dragon, Senator Byrd. The left accepts and loves him. They don't accept and love you. There's something else going on here is what I'm getting at. Go ahead. Well, I'm glad you're giving me 10 minutes. I hope you hold to that because you did speak even over that. That's okay. And I'll be happy to go. No, nope, I just spoke six and a half minutes. Go ahead. I got you, whatever. Uh, my, my clocks is different. That's okay, though. Well, there was a break, a three-minute, three-and-a-half-minute break. Yeah, that's right, whatever. But the, but the point is that, uh, and we can go into this. I'll, in fact, I'll go to the end of the program the next hour or two because you're right. That's, I feel like it's the only way I can really get a clear exposition of all my positions. But here's the issue about that. All right, first off, the KKK was not the author of any sort of Planned Parenthood. Uh, what I did, and I was in the House of Representatives, by the way, let me make something really clear to you so there's no misunderstanding. Not only have I spoken and, and been completely opposed to abortion, I also put my money where my mouth is. In the House of Representatives, I voted for the strongest anti-abortion law that's ever been passed by a legislative body in the United States of America. So it's really clear what I stand for. Well, good job. Well, that, that's exactly right. But again, it shows you the, the misconceptions people might have. Now, 
Here is the point, though. I served on the Health and Welfare Committee, and I do believe that massive welfare illegitimacy is something that damages black people and damages the taxpayer. We have many married couples who can't afford to have kids because of this horrific tax program and because a lot of these so-called social welfare programs going on. And when I was in the legislature, I said that I don't think this is, a, is, is proper I, and that we educate African-Americans or anybody else. Not, it wasn't based on race. But if you go in the social welfare system, that you should be encouraged to abstain. And if you can't abstain, you should be responsible. If you have children uh, in this system uh, that you're in, it lessens your opportunity for education, your opportunity for uh, advancement. And, and that's what we have. We have a repeating cycle of poverty in America. It, it's, it's, it's true, and it's damaging everybody. And as I said, there's, there's no problem with black birth rates in America. There's no problem with Mexican-American birth rates in America. There is a problem with white birth rates in America, and one of the reasons why is because we have this denigrated society. A lot of white people say, I don't want to bring a kid in this, uh, in this world. And, it makes, and also, they have all sorts of economic hurdles to, to ride through to be able to have a child today. Whereas the welfare recipient, even though I don't know if it's necessarily true, sees one more illegitimate child as a path to greater benefits, bigger apartments, uh, welfare apartments, more direct payments, more food stamps, that type of thing. I don't think it really helps them overall, but they see that bigger check and it's it literally an incentive. So I said that we should, to qualify for welfare, we should at least try to counsel any, any person on welfare, especially those who are not married and who are reproducing these kids without a loving present father, that we should encourage them to either abstain, that's the best thing, or to practice some sort of responsibility and not, and not bring children to this environment that lessens their opportunity and makes those children that are born have a greater sense. The reason why we have more, we spend two, we spend two trillion dollars on the welfare system in America. I'm just, I've just done a complete report on that. By the way, people can go to davidduke.com. I have a massive archive on this. They can look up these issues. And they can read about all these issues, including all of what I'm saying about Jewish racism and tribalism. And that's the real supremacy in the planet Earth, really. But the, the fact is, I've just done a big report on it. We spent $2 trillion in the so-called war on poverty. And we got more poverty than ever. We got more crime than ever. We got millions of people on drugs. We're not solving these issues. So it's, it's not any sort of genocide to urge people to be responsible. And that's what I did when I was in the legislature. I urged that. Of course, I was condemned, naturally. Uh, but the people who are committing the genocide in America in terms of, uh, of the Planned Parenthood meeting lessening birth, the people being genocided in Europe, and this is the fundamental thing that I hope you understand, Mr. Jones, and I understand, the people being genocided are the European people. Our birth rate now is 1.6 per couple. I mean, two, even two doesn't really take care of the people that die and don't, aren't able to reproduce or whatever. You need 2.1. Our people, I mean, you, give me my 10 minutes, please. This it, it certainly, you know, this is one quarter of our people are being lost. I believe this is also a pattern of the promotion. You talked about all this promotion. It's a good example of this sexual degeneracy and, and the, the lesbian gay agenda and so forth. I, I can show you, I can prove it to anybody's satisfaction. It is totally, pra I mean, practically totally. It is 98% dominated and controlled by Jewish extremists. And by the way, they support Israel. These same extremists support Israel, which doesn't even allow a marriage between a man and a man or a woman and a woman. They don't allow it in Israel, but every major Jewish organization in America, you can go to the Council of Presidents of major Jewish organizations, which is a real organization, has a budget of billions of dollars, all these groups. Every, that group puts a policy and they support gay marriage. They support gun control of the American people. You talked about that earlier in the show or another show I listened to a while back that the Israelis were promoting gun control for America. They support gun control. This is every major Jewish organization in the United States of America. So we have a tremendous double standard. And I ask you why. I ask, why is it that there is this worldwide campaign of hatred and viciousness against Europeans? I have another graphic which we can show you've shown a, few, a couple. Let me show another graphic here. This is from the movie Django, which is produced by the Weinstein brothers. And this is a perfect example of what, what's going on in this, in this country and the vicious racism that's going on. This is a quotation from the movie Django. 
which has the black hero. It shows black people tell me, by the way, every Native American is an evil son of a gun in this movie. And they show black people suffering and suffering. Take a look at that clip again, the, the, the image. The quotation is, and the, the black hero in the movie, who's for people to admire, goes on, kill white people and get paid for it. What's not to like? My God. Now, this is produced by the Weinstein brothers. And it's not just the Weinstein brothers. It's literally almost every major, it's every major Jewish studio. Constantly, they're, they're talking about white slavery. Do you know, Mr. Jones, for instance, that in the world, Jews are less than one-tenth of one percent of the population of the world. Do you know that their own historians boast about the fact that they have controlled and dominated the slave trade, the worldwide slave trade, for 2,000 years? And in the Encyclopedia Britannica, in fact, Marcus, who's one of their chief historians, literally says that the Jews controlled the slavery. They enslaved millions of Europeans over the years. They actually even worked with some of the uh, corsairs in, in North Africa. Which, which went and captured Europeans, and they were the biggest slave traders even in Muslim countries. They ran the triangular slave trade. There's no argument about it. I can show you in Jewish publications about this. Now, they're the world champions of slavery. But what does our Jewish-controlled media try to do? They try to create guilt for white people about slavery. When the truth is, in America, for instance, under the American Union, we, only had, we had slavery for, what, 90 years or something like that? Less than that, even. Okay? And... And the Jews have been being the chief slave traders in the history of the world. The Old Testament says it in, in, in Leviticus, where they literally say, you can't enslave your fellow Jews, but non-Jews, you can enslave and you can treat harshly. Now, if, if they have the guts to try to criticize white people for 100 years of slavery in the United States of America, they better be the first ones to condemn themselves. But they don't do that. The truth is that every nation on earth has had slavery. Every people has enslaved others. Every people has been imperialist. I don't endorse that. I think slavery is wrong and horrible, and I don't believe in even in imperialism. I think every people have a right to be free. But the truth is to condemn European Americans for their role in slavery for a few hundred years is, is, is ridiculous, because then you'd have to condemn every nation and the heroes of most of the nations on the planet Earth. So we have a double, complete double standard. What, we, what, we do, what we're having in this country is there is a campaign to make European Americans a minority in this country, a minority in Canada, a minority in Australia, a minority in France, a minority in Germany, a minority in, in the UK, a minority in Sweden, little countries that are so beautiful in their traditions. This is a massive crime against humanity. And I am not being racist because I'm defensive of the things that I love. I love my people. I love my heritage. I know that, you know, European Americans created the United States of America. They wrote our Constitution. They gave us our Bill of Rights, including our, our Second Amendment uh, rights. And you know, and I know, that if America, America becomes a minority nation, you think you're going to keep your guns out there, people who are listening to me right now? You know you're not going to keep your guns. Because every major organization of these other groups, like the NAACP, like the Razi and Ida, the Jewish groups, all those groups support confiscation of your guns. The demographics of the United States of America and of Europe, to me, is the most important human rights issue on the world. And because of those demographics, because the European-American elite in a 90% European country, it's normal to have Europeans being the elite of a 90% country populated by their own. To overthrow that elite, they had to put out this hate propaganda, this self-hate propaganda, and they had to incite the minorities against those Europeans who defended themselves, like, like myself. I got over 60% of the European-American vote in, in Louisiana, twice, for the U.S. Senate, for the governorship of my state. The people knew I wasn't a racist. They knew that I was a decent person. I believed in civil rights and human rights. But, but the way they beat me was by inciting hatred in the minorities to get a black bloc vote out there. That's what's really going on in this country. And that's what they're using. That's why they're trying to empower this, 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 this change in America. It's a divide and conquer strategy. And that way, you're very correct. But who's dividing and conquering? If it was really just a question of being against everybody, why would they go only against European Americans? And why would they support? You know, I'll give you one last example. I guess I got one minute left on my 10. I'll give you another example. The SPLC, which is a Jewish-run organization, Mr. Cohen, very anti-white organization, and Mr. Potok are the two major figures of the organization. 
They condemn me because I want to preserve, you know, my heritage, my way of life, my traditions, even the way my children and grandchildren will look someday and the values that they have, right? Well, they condemn us during the time when we had the Steve Scalise controversy, when you had the congressman who came to one of my meetings. During that time, they criticized him for simply going to a meeting of European Americans, right? So, but here you have Barbara, excuse me, uh, you have Schultz Wasserman, right? A Jewish congresswoman who gave a big speech at an international women's group condemning Jewish intermarriage with non Jews. And by the way, they don't use simply a religious qualification for that. They use that in a racial sense. In Israel, a Jew can marry another Jew who is non religious, who hates religion, who is a communist or whatever. Anybody, but the, the final determinant in Israel whether you can get married is not whether you're Jew by religion, but whether you're Jew by race. So tell me, Alex, how in the world do we have really a fair playing field in this country when the same media that promotes the Jewish state of Israel is doing everything they can to destroy European Americans being a majority and, and really preserving our European American sure. Western okay. Christian now culture? Listen, that's, that's 10 minutes, and, and I talked for seven earlier. Coming sure, up the ahead. next hour, I can't skip any more of these breaks, which I've been doing. And so we're going to have to go a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there, take some phone calls, uh, do some stuff like that. And I'm not criticizing you here, but the little debate tactic of constantly implying I'm not letting you talk. You've talked more than I have this hour, unless you count the ads as my time. And, and, and that's not my time. Those are ads uh, on radio. So you're, you're being able to make your points. You're not being censored. You're not being stopped. And so that's not a fair debating tactic to keep implying you're getting cut off. I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm trying to be it nice. Gives me more time than O'Reilly. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> sure, exactly. Well, there's always this criticism that I'm cutting people off. The truth is, I let guests talk more than other shows. I might kind of rudely interject because I get excited and want to say something. I'm not polished. I don't want to be polished. So I think you've been making your points there. Okay. I've got to talk about a sponsor here for a moment. But then when we come back, here's what I'm getting at. I know sure. a ton of Jews uh, who are against globalism, against tyranny, who just want freedom, uh, who are involved in all sorts of, you know, really good things, uh, you know, promoting freedom. And then I constantly see these examples, and these charts that are put together to say that, you know, it's Jews, period. I, I think you could say there's leftist Jews who are, and, and, and socialist-leaning Jews who happen to be super rich, who are at the core of promoting socialism and communism. I mean, I've seen Jewish leaders on C-SPAN say, you know, Judaism is communism. Well, then I've studied the different flavors of Judaism. Like, I've looked at other religions, and that's not even the case. So there is a lot of this stuff going on. I think there's some oversimplifying here happening. So I'm going to make a statement when we come back and then get your take on that. Briefly, if you just tuned in, I'm Alex Jones. This is a, a interview debate with Dr. David Duke. We're going to be having black supremacists on, Hispanic supremacists on. The problem is we've invited them on. They won't come on. So David Duke did come on the show, uh, and I think it's thought-provoking. And that's what we're here to do is get beyond political correctness. Because in political correctness, it's okay for Wolf Blitzer or somebody like a CIA operative uh, Anderson Cooper to interview a David Duke. But then... I've noticed if talk radio shows have him on and even criticize him, they go, look, this talk show host who's conservative had David Duke on. He must be with him. Or, look, they use the word master, master's degree. That's code word for masters in slavery. Or brown bags in Seattle means you don't like black people. So there's this hyper obsession with all of this. And I think it's important just to get it all out in the open, suss it out, debate it. Here's what I'm saying. The West is having 1.3 in Europe on average. It is 1.6 in the U.S. The global average is about 1.5. Japan has 1.2, 1.3. They're industrialized. They're not having kids because of the wealth. That's the syndrome. The selfishness of wealth. I'm not knocking wealth. It's just that's a fact. Uh, so I don't think that's a targeted thing that's happening. Uh, I do think people in the West should have kids. I mean, I... I I don't want there to be no more Europeans. I think that's a sad thing. I wouldn't want to say, no. you know, let's get rid of all the Africans either. I'd be sad if Africans were dying. I like human population. I want to go to space. So that's my statement on that front. I'm trying to transcend just the debate of tribalism.
because when you're being attacked tribally, it makes sense to be racially based. I get it. Whether you're Hispanic, black, white, Asian, whatever. The point is, couldn't we come together for free market and freedom? Why does it have to be if America becomes a majority minority country that we will lose the guns? With the social demographics of Latin American voters, they tend to be socialist or communist. Yes, the guns will be taken. I want to reach out to those folks. I want to, because I've been able to wake up people that are Hispanic or black. I have a lot of Hispanic and black listeners that are really awake and get what's happening and are good people. So I just want to wake everybody up. I want everybody to succeed. I want everybody to either keep their culture, mix cultures, don't. Whatever you want to do, I'm a libertarian. That's what I'm getting at. We're going to go to break, come back, have David's response for a short five-minute segment, then come back again, and I'm going to get into a bunch of questions uh, that I've got for him here. I also want to talk about his take on the IRS because he is a political prisoner. I mean, they really did target him. You can say, good, throw him in jail. Well, you're a tyrant then because it, it could be you next. So that's all coming up. Uh, by the way, we mentioned we have the best colloidal silver 30 parts per million, 1995. It helps fund our operation at InfoWarsLife.com. We have two specials. They corrected me. We have 30% off one bottle or buy two, get two free at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll free 888 888- Two five three three one three nine. If you don't know the benefits and what colloidal silver can do, go to InfoWarsLife.com, click on the silver bullet tab and read about it. Super Bell Vitality's back in. Brain Force is almost sold out. We've got a lot of great books, films, you name it. Your purchases fund the good guys in an open, free speech college of ideas that our colleges used to be. Now they're barren, sterile, Thank politically correct, listening. mentally ill institutions of brainwashing. Stay with us. Third hour straight ahead. Well, David Duke, the Ph.D. in history and former is it Grand Wizard or Grand Dragon, I, Grand Cyclops. I, I'm sorry. I, I just I think that's so funny. Uh, David Duke, I'm going to give you the floor here for the next four or five minutes. We're going to go to break, come back, get into a whole bunch of questions, other issues you want to cover, where you think the world's going, the economy. But explain to me, and I, and I mean this seriously, where did all this dragon, goblin, cyclops stuff come from? And, and were you a goblin cyclops before you were a dragon? No, never was a goblin, never was a cyclops. But I am a European-American who realized <laughs> at a very young age that we were going to become minoritized in our own nation, that we were going to lose our rights or privileges, including our gun rights. And I've seen a lot of destruction of those rights over the years, and they're going to continue to go. And as our country goes, and as the power of the media goes to brainwash our people and to degenerate our people, that's going to continue. And I, I was a young man who I saw this writing on the wall. I didn't win any popularity contest by joining a, joining a nonviolent Klan organization. And I, I thought I could recover the image because originally uh, the Klan, as many Americans said, books north and south, uh, restored the, the freedom, really, of the Southern people and the, and the decency of what's going on in the South in a very horrible Reconstruction period where European Americans in the South were stripped of all their voting rights. And they were done so without any due process. I think the war between the states, for instance, was not a civil war, that the South was fighting for the same principle of freedom and independence the North fought for. And in fact, the North understood this principle. Robert E. Lee's statue is in the Hall of Heroes in the United States Capitol building. Even Jefferson Davis, the first head of the Confederacy. Americans always respected and loved Robert E. Lee. Today, he's being called a traitor. He wasn't a traitor. If he's a traitor, then Thomas Jefferson was a traitor. George Washington was a traitor. And the attack on Southern heritage is nothing more than an attack on entire European heritage, because now they're talking about taking down statues of Thomas Jefferson, who I gave know. us our Bill of Rights. They talk about taking George Washington's name off public schools. They did that in New Orleans, saying that he was unworthy because he had slaves. Well, half of the Great heroes of the entire third world are for slaveholders, including an awful lot of Jewish heroes were slaveholders. Just read about Jewish history. The, the hypocrisy is unbelievable in this country. Well, that's certainly true. Let me interject this. Oh, you said, okay, I'll interject. Oh, but I, we're, but, but now we're, in this hour, we're going into discussion. I remember even a right, Washington Post about article minutes, about a whole bunch of the leaders of the South were actually Jewish. You're not mentioning 
those leaders. Go ahead. I, well, I think not being aware of the Jewish tribalist racism that's been in existence in this in this world for so long was part of our downfall. I believe Judah P. Benjamin, for instance, who was a treasurer in the South, just like that, a lot of Jews involved in the North as well. I think he basically ripped off the Southern Confederacy. He was in charge of taking the money to uh, to safe hold in Great Britain and other places, and he stole. He did, he. I think he was an extremely uh, damaging element in the South, and the, the South might have won the war if not for Judah P. Benjamin. We see this historically time after time after time. There's no more intensive racism or supremacism than among Jews. The, the, the Jewish Talmud, the, the chief Sephardic rabbi of Israel, and that's, this is a fact, the chief Sephardic rabbi of Israel was Rabbi Yosef. He was in coalition with Netanyahu. He literally got on the radio in Israel. He made a statement that the only purpose of non-Jews, Gentiles on earth, was to serve Jews. That Gentiles were meant to work and bind and sieve and dig, and Jews were meant to sit and eat. He compared people like yourself and myself, other Gentiles around the world, black people as well, anybody who's not a Jew, with a donkey. Oh, we want, we, want, uh, we want our Gentiles to have a long life, just like we want our donkey to have a long life so they can serve the Jew. Now, those are his words. Now, this was not some sort of extreme, strange Jew somewhere in Israel. This guy was in coalition with Netanyahu in the government, and when he died, uh, Yosef had the biggest funeral in the history of the state of Israel. All right, David Duke's our guest. We're debating. So David Duke is basically saying to a great extent there's a worldwide Jewish conspiracy that's behind the New World Order to push these agendas. And so then I would ask the question, would civilization have any problems if the Jews were all sent in a space capsule to another planet? And I'm going to ask him that question in a moment. In fact, I want to go through a bunch of questions for David Duke. And then he can spend a few minutes here and there in this hour uh, on his views about the different topics he's covering. And it's fine, David. People can go to davidduke.com and see your videos and your talking points and you know the things you talk about. And, and I've heard most of this from other people of your ilk. I'm really trying to understand, though, your worldview on things and where where you see things going. Before we go any further, I have a book here written by Paul R. Ehrlich, Ann H. Ehrlich, John P. Holdren, and, and I think those folks are Gentiles. One of them's the White House science czar, Population Resources Environment. They talk about putting fluoride in the water to reduce fertility of everybody and to reduce IQ. And I guess you you might think I'm a conspiracy theorist for talking about that. Here's Harvard, impact of fluoride on neurological development in children, massive IQ reductions. So that's Reuters. Um, is What do you think about water fluoridation? Because I just never hear the white nationalist worried about that. And, uh, you know, I don't want black babies, white babies, you know, Hispanic babies, anybody having their IQ lowered 15, 20 points, having bone cancer. Uh, autism was one in 25,000 30 years ago. Now it's one in 56. It's set by 2025. CDC says to be one in three. Uh, something's going on here. Um, and, and I see it as a eugenics operation, and I have the documents. And when I study the eugenicist, it comes out of the British royalty funding in the 1850s, the movement that created biometrics and computers and our whole world. And I see Thomas Watson and his Hollerith machines and Hitler. And I'm not saying it's a Nazi conspiracy or a white supremacist conspiracy. I'm saying it's a scientific cult conspiracy. My dad had a Jewish professor at UT. He was the head of the botany department. And he'd come over here from before World War II from Germany. And my dad was one of the smartest in test scores when he was a junior in high school. So he was already in UT uh, during the summers as part of an advanced program. And they took the 160 smartest and, and had like the five or six smartest of those. And he got invited to dinner and, and we're basically told, well, it's not like Hitler's eugenics, but it's eugenics to better humanity and, you know, kind of control society. And, you know, I'm Jewish, but, but you know, this eugenics is, is the best thing. And, of course, that was one of the people. The others were Gentiles telling my dad this. So all I'm getting at, David Duke, is everything the Jews 
Uh, what happened pre-Jew? Would there be any problems? What should be done with the Jews if you were right? The Jewish question. Uh, I mean, what's the solution to that to pose the question that Adolf Alois Hitler posed? And then finally, what is your view of Adolf Hitler? No, no people. Um, and thanks for the opportunity, finally. You told me five minutes and then another five minutes, but that's okay. So we'll Oh, don't be a crybaby, Duke. You, your I'm guys can all bean baby, count. You're going to get to talk as much as I do. You, you can bean I'm, count all day. You're, you're getting to talk. You're getting look, to talk. I'm not being a crybaby. I'm just trying to defend my right to make sure I have a fair say here. That's all. And that, Well, I'm don't spend all your that. time. I, I just talked for three minutes. I wouldn't be much of a man, would I? Because I want to make sure that I stand up for myself. And as you stand up for yourself, you're a very manly guy. And I'm going to stand up for myself, too, in terms of I think you are standing up for yourself. Now, that would be a good pay for you. You're see. older than me, but you want to have a boxing match. I, I, I don't you're a pretty tough a guy match. in prison. I just want my fair time. Come on, let's go. <laughs> so, look, here's, here's the situation. Let's, uh, let's go through this, what you're, what you're talking about. We all this scatter now, this conduct. We just ought to talk about question after question, one at a time. Okay, let's do it. So many things. Anyway, let's, let's talk about some of these things. Adolf right? Hitler. Well, first you ask me first, do I get a chance to answer your questions? What's my position on fluoridation? Absolutely against, against it. I've talked about it many times. I've written about it. I think it's destructive and poisonous. Now, the book that you mentioned by the Ehrlichs, and, and I don't know about the third guy, they are absolutely Jewish. And wow. they are, there's no, you know, I know you say don't Jew, 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 but let me tell you something. People are amazed. Now, if you want to talk about murder or, eugen or what you consider to be eugenics. It depends on what eugenics is. It, you know, every family in the natural history of the world, every Christian family wanted their child to marry a good family, a family with a good record, uh, healthy people. Uh, some people call that eugenics. I don't agree with causing, I don't believe a sterilizing no, people. No, that's natural selection. You know, no, it's not natural selection. What happens is the people that control the society with the way the welfare system structured, with the society structured, is that we have the least capable people, the least people who can think for themselves and be free, having the most children. And there is no question that intelligence and other aspects of human, humankind and other personality aspects have an inherited component. That's the truth. I think Mr. Crick, by the way, who discovered the DNA, that was one of the greatest scientific achievements of all time. And it's led to the saving of literally hundreds of thousands of lives, developing ways to combat many diseases, I certainly am opposed to the vaccination that I think has been poisonous to many people. I'm, I'm not in favor of that. So on these positions, and by the way, Monsanto, which I think was one of the world's great evils, is one more. Do you know who the Monsanto family was? I'm from New Orleans. I know all about it. I've got my scholars researching the Monsanto family. I'm going, to come out, I'm going to put out a documentary on it. The Monsanto family was a huge Jewish slaveholding family, 40% of Jewish families own slaves in the United States of America. Jews all over the world own slaves. And yet there's no guilt for Jews. That's why I bring up the subject, because the tremendous hypocrisy. And that shows you who controls our society. Let's talk about the real murder and mass murder. The greatest mass murder of the 20th century. I wrote a book about it called The Secret Behind Communism. I even interview, and I became friends with a very great Alexander Solzhenitsyn, one of the greatest men, most courageous men of the 20th century. And I have quotes from him. And he said, the reason why the world doesn't know much about the greatest mass murder of all times is because the world now is in the hands of the perpetrators. Soviet communism was literally almost entirely a Jewish condition, a Jewish promotion. And by the way, Jewish Zionists, as well as Jewish communists, supported it. The chief financial supporter of the Bolshevik Revolution was Jacob Schiff, one of the biggest capitalists of the world. Now, why would, you know, Trotsky literally sat down with Baron von Rothschild in Vienna. That's written in Jewish books. Why would the leading communist sit down with the leading capitalist? OK, the reason was is because whether you, they talk about capitalism or they talk about communism, what you're really talking about is Jewish supremacism. They've gained control over both things. And in communism, my, my good friend, we need to talk about this more on your show my show and in the world. We hear about the Holocaust every day of your life. You want, my, you want my opinions on Hitler. How about your opinions and all of our opinions on Yagoda? Who, if you read Jewish publications in Israel, they talk about Yagoda. They say we must admit some of the greatest mass murders of all time were Jewish. They talk about Yagoda killing 10 million Christians in Russia and others. 
And we had massive, we had 9 million people heard, and heard, and heard about or killed in Ukraine by the Bolshevik Jews. I'm talking about complete domination by these Jewish elements, these Jewish tribalists. I can prove that. Go to my site, davidduke.com. Watch my videos on it. And, and this is not even, there's no movies about this horrible massacre of humanity, this attack against Christianity. Of course not. All you get every day of your life is about Hitler and, and, uh, and, and the six million. I'm, I know that there are atrocities done by the National Socialists, but why don't we start answering the question of why all we hear about is the six million? Why don't we hear about the 10 million Christians? Why don't we hear about the fact that Israel itself, our, quote, ally, committed terrorism against the United States? They admitted their terrorism in the Levant affair. They literally attacked the USS Liberty, no question about it. Our Secretary of State at the time said this specifically, that it was a deliberate attack by Israel. They killed 34 American young sailors and fighting men. They, they wounded 174, maimed and burned others. There was an intentional false flag attack. Yeah, I said, I agree with you. There are a lot of false flag attacks. And then, of course, you had the Jonathan Pollard case, who our Secretary of Defense said it was the most damaging spy case in American history. It caused the death of 200 of our operatives. Okay, you Jonathan got Pollard. you got six our, minutes. I got four. Okay. I'm looking our at an atomic, government, our I'm government looking at an atomic finish, clock. Finish. Now, now, what I want to do is, what I want to do our now. Government, our government literally is freeing Jonathan Pollard now, giving him parole. This guy did more damage to anybody. And yet, this was not a question. To show you that the Jews don't control. Why, why would the internationals support the Jewish racist supremacist state of Israel and the Jewish supremacy over the American media and the Jewish supremacy over American uh, academia if it was just a bunch of rich people getting together? No, there are Jewish leaders of the Illuminati. There are Jewish leaders of the CFR. There are Jewish leaders of the Bilderbergs. There are Jewish leaders of the media. And there are Gentile collaborators. But those Gentiles involved, they know who the real power is. They know the one force that they cannot criticize. All right. I've never had anybody Jewish try to stop me from covering the things I do, going over the things I do. And I just you know, sit here today having this discussion with you, David, and I do stuff like talk for four minutes, you talk for six and a half, and then you keep saying you're being cut short. So I want to just establish, I got to go to break here, that now we're going to have a free-for-all discussion, a normal banter, like if you were on Fox News or CNN, where you talk 30 seconds, I talk 30. We go back and forth, we interject, we have a discussion. I want to take some phone calls unscreened as well. Sure. Uh, and so it, it's wide open phones. We can put a minute timer on it. Your, your, uh, your staff can do that, and that would be fair to both of us if you like to for each question. Question and comment. That's sure, be great. whatever. It's not going to be exact as it announced, but fine. You're getting okay. plenty of time. I just want to stop obsessing on it. 800 259 9231. 800 259 9231 is the toll free number to join us. If you have a disagreement or you agree or you have a question uh, for David Duke, I'm Alex Jones, your host, uh, having a you know, true hardcore discussion here. Decades ago, they'd have folks like him come talk at universities. Now they're saying don't do it. That's censorship. I'm Alex Jones, your host. The news websites are Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. You can find the free video and audio feeds, podcasts, droid apps, iPhone apps, all for free at Infowars.com forward slash show. Coming up in the next segment, we'll start taking some phone calls. This is a short six-minute segment. David, let me just throw a couple quick questions out and then try to get you to answer them. I'd give this interview a B right now, and you know, maybe I'm not doing the best job myself, but I just don't want to get stuck on petty stuff. I'm, having, I'm trying to have a real thought-provoking discussion and debate with you. Uh, let me ask you this question. Looking out into the future, where do you see the world in 10, 20, 30 years if these forces you say that are running things are successful versus the type of world that you, as a leader, would like to see. Because it's true that what they call anti-Semitism is on the rise worldwide. It's true that there's major backlashes to socialism, communism, political correctness. It's true that the political correctness is becoming bizarro, freakish, ban the name boy and girl, uh, ban men and women's bathrooms, ban single parent homes, uh, Agenda 21 zoning, uh, totally controlling every facet of our lives. It's true a great tyranny is upon us, 
So if the tyrants are successful, what will happen versus the world you'd like to see? Well, I think what you're saying is, is, is true, and I see the same kind of world you're talking about. Uh, we're we're going to have in our country and Europe, this continues to go on, exactly the same kind of conditions that went under Jewish-led Bolshevism in Russia. We're going to see those gulags, and we're going to see those camps, and we're going to see the destruction of our people. They're already doing it. I mean, you've got to understand, you're, the European mankind right now is being steadily wiped out. And that's because they see our people as their chief competitor in the world. And they know that if they destroy the elite in America. Now, I want to give another uh, one of my graphics to illustrate this. Here's a graphic from the New York Times. It's David Brooks, again, one of their lead columnists. He literally talks in there about the replacement of the American elite and the Jewish, quote, the Jewish takeover of America. That's the real elite. Now, this elite is not trying to destroy Jews. In fact, they support even the Jewish state in Israel. They're not trying to do anything. In fact, you talked about the, the problems with our family. How about Hollywood that pushes drugs on our kids? I'm talking about hard drug use that preaches every kind of degeneracy and destructiveness on our land. Who runs Hollywood? It's not European Christians. And what they've done is they've made anti-Semitism a term simply to mean anti-Zionist supremacism or anti-Jewish supremacism. Not all Jews are supremacists, but most Jews support Jewish tribalism, though would support Jewish power. They support, you know, they've been propagandized, too, by their Jewish leaders. They have been taught to hate Gentiles. They have been taught that Gentiles are all out to kill them. They have been taught that the Jews have to stick together. And because of that racism, which is preached to the Jews, it's preached in modern media. It's preached in, uh, in our media, by the way. We're taught to feel guilty because, because the fact that some Europeans didn't want to be destroyed by these Jewish Bolsheviks. The Second World War is a good example of that. They were already killing tens of millions of our people, tens of millions of our people before the Second World War. And we weren't on the side of the Bolsheviks in that war, killed 54 million people. That wasn't a good war. That was a destructive war against European mankind. That war could have been avoided. And they're leading us right now. They're all concerned about what's going overseas. The problem, the, the real problem we have is not the ISIS threat. We wouldn't even have the ISIS threat, except the fact that organized Jews were the point men for the propaganda and the direct organizations and the control of the political, political process that literally opened our borders. Jacob Javis, the, Senate that, that led, the senator, the Jewish senator that led the fight for the opening of our borders, the change of immigration law in 67, wrote a whole pamphlet, open the gates. He, didn't, he wasn't talking about open the gates of Israel. He was talking about open the gates of America so that the Jewish divide and conquer strategy would do that. That's, that's the fact. There has been a takeover. It is an ethnically driven takeover. It is not racist. It is certainly not supremacist for any people on this planet, whether it be whites, blacks, yellows, anybody, to defend themselves from a takeover by a hostile predatory group. Now, I agree, not all Jews have this ideology, but most Jews are taught intrinsically to help and support other Jews. And Europeans are taught that they should never band together for their own interest. That's because that's how they've taken over. Now, right, we're going to break, long segment coming up, and I'm gonna come back. I right. see people make the same graphs, the same maps, and show Catholics in control of everything, and say they're running everything. And I just think it's corrupt, organized crime type systems that are running things and if we approach it by saying no to organized crime no to cartels yes to free market we can just end this system that's degenerating well where i stand is clear i'm against totalitarianism fascism communism socialism political correct is a clear and present tyranny and 50 times the threat uh to liberty of some of the more modern white-based fascist movements in this country. And it's taking over, and it is bizarre how flamingly corrupt it is. You will not say boy and girl. You will do as we say. I mean, this is like being in a super Jim Jones cult or something. And it just gets crazier and more vitriolic and more dumbed down and more arrogant. And you can see as the left finally reaches their goals they are revealing that they do want a great tyranny in this country. But I see the people that obsess over who runs things 
only obsessing over that, never about taking our country and our world back. David Duke's our guest, and, you know, I'm sitting here talking to him, and it's just surreal because he's a smart guy, and he's sitting there agreeing where we can agree on things and disagreeing on others. But it's kind of given me a headache, and I've got some important questions I want to ask in a moment and then go to your phone calls. We don't screen them. We got calls from Germany, Canada, New Jersey, Oregon, South Carolina, you name it. We're going to go to them. We'll even do a little bit of overdrive in the next hour if the Duke can do it. But first off, I don't care if you're black, white, Asian, whatever you are, you're a human being. Our bodies, our physiologies are the same. You need to try Prostagard today. We set out with one of the top manufacturers of the country to make the super prostate defender. It's got the, one of the most concentrated organic dosages of saw palmetto, but then it's got all the other things that are known to supercharge, not just your prostate, but other glands. And it's about half the cost of the leading competitor, $19.95. And your purchase, the small profit we make, I'm a capitalist, not ashamed of it, but it's a small profit, free market, helps fund this operation that's here to get people thinking. So try Prostagard today at InfoWarsLife.com. JB for Liberty in Los Angeles says it's a fantastic supplement. The prostate I began taking it every morning. It took about two, three weeks, but after that time, I really began feeling the effects. My constant feeling of urinating throughout the night went away, and I feel great. I mixed this supplement with several others, such as Super Male Vitality and nascent iodine. All are wonderful and truly help get the body regulated and feeling healthier. Thank you for your support, JB in Los Angeles. That's a third-party review site linked on InfoWars.com and InfoWarsLife.com. Silver Bullet is back in. And we're going to go back to the same special that sold it out. Buy two bottles at the regular price. It's already discounted. Get two free or buy a single bottle and get 30% off. So buy two bottles at the regular price, get two free or buy one bottle, 30% off. Infowarslife.com. And Super Mel Vitality is also back in stock, naturally boosting your stamina, libido, and so much more. Look, uh, David, it'd be easy for me to take the gloves off of you. You could do it, too. We're having somewhat of a gentlemanly debate. I'll have you back up if you'll do it to maybe have a debate with somebody that really hates your guts, maybe a black supremacist or a, uh, you know some Jewish organization. But sitting back here, the, my, my biggest beef is you haven't been answering some of my questions when I get into Planned Parenthood and how do you square the views of the left that's covertly promoting Population reduction, you you wouldn't tell me what grand cyclops, grand dragon men. I mean, those are serious questions. I want to ask you that. I want to ask you this. You know, do you defend what the Klan did and, or do you deny that they lynched innocent black people? Do you deny they did these type of bad things? Because just because there's other supremacist groups and blacks out murdering whites, we criticize that and it's horrible. But well, the system uses what the Klan's done. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. So the answer is, of course, I condemn it. I condemn anybody of any group that would ever kill innocent people or do harm. I would condemn, not only would I not condone it, I would condemn it absolutely in every regard. And I do believe that there have been, one of the problems with the Klan, one reason why I left the Klan, is that anybody can call an organization and call it Ku Klux Klan and do whatever they want, say whatever terrible things that they want. And I even agree that in some cases you even had government informants. In there, we we know that some of the worst events, such as the bombing we, in in Birmingham, Alabama, where kids were killed, uh, we know that there were government agents that really led that terrible attack to discredit people like myself who do good things. I can't have any control of other groups. That's why I left because I'm not going to be a party, any organization that I can't that at least control, and I'm not going to take a blame for things that I would condemn. So that's that's my answer. Of course, I would condemn it like any decent human being. Uh, but that's but again, you're not. And, and again, I, and I pre, by the way, uh, you're welcome to come on my show and I'd love to come back and I'll be happy to go uh, into overdrive with you. I'll be here all night a, a, as well. And and I do appreciate the fact that you're giving me a, a chance to speak and to, to show what I really stand for. I mean, there's a lot of mention of Klan and white supremacy, but obviously what I'm saying here is not white supremacism. It's no way near that. In fact, what it's saying is that every sure. people on the earth have a right to be free, have a light right to exist and preserve their culture. European Americans and European Canadians and European Europeans 
are literally being genocide. The real threat, there's no threat to the yellow people, the Chinese people. They have 1.3 billion of them. There's going to be 1.3 billion Africans. It's more than Europeans in the world, while Europe and America and white countries are being declined. And I'm telling you, it's not supremacism. It's not racism and hatred to defend yourself from predators. And it, as you said earlier in the show, if a tribe is being attacked by another tribe, and that tribe wants to you know, kidnap all the women, rape all the women, kill the kids, take over, put them into slavery, whatever, that, that tribe has the moral right to defend themselves. And that's what I'm talking about here. Our people are facing real genocide. We're facing loss of our own countries. And most Americans, most Americans watching this broadcast right now, I'm absolutely sure you're going to have to figure out whether you agree or not. You know that this, the country of our forefathers is being totally rotted out. You know that we're losing our heritage, our values, our traditions. You go into the stores, you go into the uh, communities of our society, you don't even look like you belong anymore. You go in with stares of hatred against you. Now, again, I don't blame the African-Americans. They didn't change the policy. The immigrants did not change American immigration policy. The immigrants didn't keep the American government from enforcing our laws like any healthy country would do enforce their laws. What was done is we've been subverted by another predator, another extremely racist supremacist group, and that's the Jewish extremists. And every major Jewish organization supports this destruction of America. They support the Hollywood industry and media, which teaches our kids to use drugs, which destroys our... Right, we've well, already said that. Let me ask another question that goes from phone calls here. Sure. Look, humans have acted the same in every society. Are you saying all these problems wouldn't be here if Jews never existed? I think, I think absolutely these problems wouldn't be here, except for the fact, not because they existed, but because we let them take over. But they didn't do it openly. They didn't say, look, we're Jews and we're going to control your society. They did it by deceit. And even an intelligent man, if, he, if somebody slips poison in his food, he can be killed. And that's exactly what they did with us. They got control. They, they, they used their financial uh, wherewithal, with, by, the, by the way, the banks. And by the way, uh, one thing I would argue with you, I don't believe... In, in free the free market philosophy. I believe in a fair market philosophy. I don't... We have well, a look, I mean, I've been around, and I mean, the Jews I've known, people that... Uh, it's either they're liberal or conservative or libertarian, and then they're just like that movement that they support. Uh, listen, we wouldn't have this problem if we had a fair market where a government defended a, a true free enterprise system. We have, we, we have this because of... Well, these international Jewish bankers like Goldman Sachs, like the people who control well, the I'm federal. against crony capitalism. It, it's not just crony capitalism. It is a, it is a capitalism controlled the Jewish. When, when Mr. Ben Shalom Bernanke, who has spoke before Jewish organizations that are extremely supremacist, racist, supportive of the state of Israel, when he doles out trillions of dollars, which he did, 20, 20 trillion dollars, by the way, by his own just script of his hand. And that's reported by Bloomberg News, in fact, you know, and... When he doles that out, if anybody thinks he's not doling it out, first and foremost, to his Jewish brethren, they've got to be extremely naive. That's because we have a free market economy. We don't have a fair market. We, we don't have a situation. That's not a free market economy when we have a private Federal Reserve uh, creating hundreds of trillions in derivatives and doling out $20 trillion. Uh, well, you're right. And it's not a true freedom. But, but freedom, you see, if you just say that people can do what they want to, if, they, if people have the money to buy our political process, which is the biggest contributor. Well, that's not a free market. That's, that's a rigged, crony the biggest contributors, The biggest contributors of the Republican Democratic Party, according to the Washington Post. Here's what I'm saying, David. I don't think racially based politics are going to pull anybody out of this or the globalist that you call the Zionist would not be pushing it. They control prisons by putting people no, 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 into no, no, no. racial groups. That the media is, is, is telling Europeans to, to help stand against this Jewish takeover of our society. Let me give you one, one more graphic. This is from Harvard University. Now, Harvard is the source of our elite. That's the elite that runs the country. It's like the budding institutions of the American elite. Harvard, this country, is 70% European-American, including 70% of the highest performing students in the United States of America. We built Harvard. Harvard was a 100% European Christian institution that was built, great institutions. They are the modern American elite. We are only now 20%, the 70% European American majority is now 20% of Harvard. Jews who are 2% of our population are now 25%. There are more Jews at Harvard in the Ivy League 2% of the population, and there are 70%. And you tell me there's not a racism, 
going on by Jews against us. And the way, and the way this is going on is they discriminate against oh. your people, Americans. They gain control. Well, David, I'll say this, and then I got to go to calls. Yeah. In fairness, there's this paradox, because I truly believe in ideas and, and what Martin Luther King said about judging people by the character of what they do. And I think you probably agree with judging an individual by their character, right? I do, yes. Okay. It is true. The Democrats, Hollywood, all of it is viciously anti-liberty, viciously anti-freedom, uh, I think felt dominated by Western culture, has now basically taken it over, the left has, and wants to destroy it even though they're in control of it. So there is an attitude, and I call it basically leftist garbage, collectivist garbage, that does want to overthrow any original Western institutions, even though that's the source of the power structure's power. And so I think it's more an act of ceremonial domination, almost at a subconscious level, than it is anything else. And regardless of who's running the show, th there is freakish racism against whites now being promoted everywhere. And, and, and I think it's meant to just condition everybody to accept anything uh, well, and to accept off, what's coming in the future. Um, well, I agree with you in a sense. And, and I tell you, but it's not just the left. It is this, the so-called controlled right. right. You know, the, the Republican Party has been taken over by essentially Jewish communists. And this is no joke. Uh, go to my site. By the way, you can, uh, people, in fact, I'm going to send you a copy of my book, uh, Mr. Jones, and you can read it. It's called The Secret. Let me see if I can get this in the camera. The Secret, the behind, Secret communism. behind Communism. And what this book does is it documents. I went into the archives of the Russian government, the old communist government. In fact, the government now in Russia is anti-communist. It seems like the Jewish media doesn't know that. That's why they don't like the Russians, because they don't have the power over the Russian people they once had. That's why they hate Russia so much, and they're trying to get us into wars with Russia and sanctions against Russia. But this book literally shows and proves to anybody of a, a thoughtful person. I, I use Jewish sources. I use mainstream sources. I prove that, th that the Russian Revolution, the Communist Revolution, in fact, the Communist Movement worldwide, that it was overwhelmingly a Jewish movement. It was a tribalist movement. Leon Trotsky was name was Bronstein. Lenin was part Jewish. Zinnenem, Kavanev, all the leaders of, of communist Russia were Jewish folks. That's the fact. Now, they took over, they took over communism, and you know what? They've taken over so-called capitalism the same way. Winston Churchill... You know, in 19, listen, I'm not going to get into a debate with you about this. We've got to go to calls. We, we, we've got to go to calls. Before okay. we, well, let me finish this one point. Before Churchill became an asset of the Rothschilds and helped lead us to the most devastating, destructive war of all time, it was truly a war against human rights, a war, in fact, that gave half of Europe to the Soviet communists. Winston Churchill wrote a big article in 1920 called Zionism versus Bolshevism, a struggle for the soul of the Jewish people. And in there he said the Jews are divided between Zionists and communists and how the, the, the Jewish communists, he talks about the Jewish control of communism, how they gripped the Russian people by the hair of their heads and massacred tens of millions. Now, there's of no debate that a lot of the leaders of the Bolshevik takeover in 1917 and V.I. Lenin and all of it were Jewish, but Stalin then went after them and there was a big purge. So, I mean, I mean, just to say the yeah, whole like Soviet Stalin, history was Jewish isn't true. Stalin was one of those collaborators. And he, he basically ultimately in the end realized that these Jews were not going to be loyal to the Russian people. And he began to take actions against them. And that's why I believe we had the Cold War, to tell you the honest to God truth. Because Russia, would then, once, once the Jews were removed from their intelligence apparatus, once they were removed from the Politburo, and many of them were in, at the end of the Second World War, that was, it was a matter of time where Russia would free itself of Jewish communism. And that's exactly what happened. But they didn't want a smooth transition like China. That's why the Jews supported Yeltsin, who sold the country to the Jews. Jewish oligarchs took over 50% of the resources of Russia. They tried to turn right. Russia... We got to go to calls, and, and 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 again earlier you would act like I'm not giving you time when, go when, when we're going to break our calls. We've got to take calls. This interview is right. almost over. The point is, and we're going to get folks on that think the Catholics run it all, and we're going to get folks. Oh, you never answered the question about the whole Catholic conspiracy because folks have got maps showing Catholics run everything. The truth well, is, there's people in all these different power positions, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and and I just think I think it lets people cop out and not take action on their own lives to say, I don't have a job because of Jews. And, well, look, and, I, and that's really my problem. Go ahead. I, okay, let me answer that question. I can disprove the idea that the Catholics control the world 
by just looking at the realities of the facts and think. It's not Catholics who own and control the Hollywood destructive media. It's not Catholics who control the international banks. It's not Catholics who control this incredible pro-Zionist policy in the Middle East. In fact, the Vatican opposes these Zio wars in Afghanistan, which have also killed and maimed hundreds of thousands of Americans. For the, for oh, the do you like the new pope? Huh? I, I disagree with some of the aspects of the pope, but I know he doesn't have much power. If Catholics really had power, you wouldn't have a media, even at Easter, talking about pedophilia, right, uh, constantly. Because they don't talk about the pedophilia and the sexual perversion that dominates the Jewish community. Some Jewish organizations do, thank God, but that's not allowed on our Well, practice. see, that's the thing, is, is that the Jewish community is very, very diverse from my research and experiences. And I just don't, I just don't see Jews that are all awake and part of some conspiracy. I, I see no, Jews that are, that are Republicans, Jews. Democrats, Libertarians, and they're just Jews. like the ideologues that are Gentiles right next to them. Jews are overwhelmingly Marxist-oriented, but there are some conservative Jews. But what, do one thing Jews are not diverse at, and that's support of the Jewish tribe. The, the idea that Gentiles are out to get them, the ideas of, of the, helping each other, and that's how they take over society, just like Harvard. How can 2% of the country, 2%, uh, now have 25% of the students at Harvard in the Ivy League, and the European Americans, which are 70% of the best students, have only 20%. That is racial discrimination. Well, a lot of that is Jews are really smart. They work hard. They help fund their own organizations. And a lot of Gentiles go out and start businesses and make even more money. I mean, David, I know you've got a bunch of degrees and stuff. You're proud of that. that that's fine. But there's a lot of Gentiles I know, you want to call us Gentiles, who don't care about degrees but are super successful. You know most of the billionaires out there didn't go to college, right? Uh, uh, Alex, I, uh, Mr. Jones, I think that's really a... Uh, a cop out say Jews are more intelligent. They're only two percent of the population. I don't mean more intelligent on average. They just are into education and are smart. Question, please. Are you saying uh, Jews aren't smart? Wait, if Jews are really say more intelligent, the truth is it's not true. I didn't say that. Uh, get Presbyterians, their IQ scores are higher than Jews. The difference in Presbyterians and Jews is the fact that Je the Jews have this tribalist supremacist ideology where they help each other and support. That's how they take over institutions. Whereas, whereas Presbyterians don't do this. That's, that's the difference. And, and secondly, the, the, the real critical issue here is if they're more intelligent, then why are 70% of the highest performing students 20% of Harvard? It's because Jews have taken over Harvard. They control the, the provost. They control the selection. In fact, they use this thing called diversity as a, as, as a scheme because what they do is they throw out the test results. I can prove to people. I have a report on this on davidduke.com. You can go to my website, davidduke.com. Do a search on Harvard and the Ivy League, and it shows that Jews are overrepresented by 14 times more than their ability warrants. And by the way, the most outstanding students at Harvard University, with even a lot of Jewish professors in it, the most outstanding students is Phi Beta Kappa. Those are the top performing students. And interestingly enough, even though Jews outnumber European Americans at Harvard and the Ivy League, the Phi Beta Kappa, 55% of the recipients after four years of college, of performance for European Americans. Jews, who are 25% of the population of Harvard, were only, guess what? You know, 11%. So again- Well, I know you're into academia. It kind of makes me get nauseous, so. Saying that Jews are smarter, that's the biggest racism and the, the biggest kind of supremacism I ever said, because they're not smarter. The reason they're in power is because they're- I did not say that Jews were smarter. I, in my experience, Jews are pretty smart and smart in business and stuff like that. Well, well, you suggested it. They are pretty smart in business. I'm not saying that they're dumb people, but their power is not based on the fact that they're smarter than all of us. Look at the tremendous beauty and great achievements of Western civilization, culture, science. All right, we got to go to calls. It's I mean, this whole thing, David Duke is our guest. You're listening to InfoWars Radio. I'm Alex Jones. This whole thing just makes my head hurt because I just want to promote the ideals of liberty across the board. And I want to be able to throw it in the face of the Southern Poverty Law Center and other people that I don't sink down to their race-based nature, uh, you know, that the left pushes. And that's what I'm saying is I want to transcend that and try to promote liberty to everybody and not fall into the race-based system. But it looks like they're pushing it so hard and the left is so racist that at the end of the day, it's just going to become that because if you're white, you won't be able to be in any area that has people that aren't white in it because you'll be killed. And I guess that's the goal. And I mean, just whoever's behind it, it sure is working. Well, you're right. That's exactly where we're going. But just remember the SPLC that's attacked you, the ADL that's attacked you, a, a lot of the power in media that's attacked you. The SPLC is red, led by Mr. Cohen. 
Yeah, that's a Kohanim. That's like the Jewish priest class. The second in command is Mike Protok, who's Jewish. The ADL, of course, is controlled. It's, it says it's a human rights organization, and it supports the incredible crimes of Israel against the Palestinians, against the Lebanese. And by the way, I want to speak to my, my Christian brethren, too, these so-called Christian Zionists. My, my goodness, I, I feel for them. I feel pity for them that they've right. been so, so brainwashed by the Jewish media that they support the Jewish state of Israel, which has massacred, murdered tens of thousands of Christian Palestinians and Christian Lebanese. Well, we got to go. We got to go to the calls now, but I'll say this. If the people that are promoting hate laws and hate crime laws are successful, David Duke would be arrested for talking like this. I would be taken off the air. And I want to say this, whether you agree with this or find it to be detestable, and I find it all to be very, very frustrating. We have to understand that they're using political correctness to shut all this down. And that's why we need to have the controversial guest on. We need to support uh, the open, free debate. And we're going to have people on that disagree with Mr. Duke. And we're going to have people on uh, that are basically ideologically the same. I mean, look at Nation of Islam. It's like black David Duke people. You know, they basically say no, the same thing, like but, 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 but from the perspective of black people, oh, it's almost identical. They're not. I, I don't say... I've never said we should go out and start killing black people or anything like that, like Nation of Islam has said. So that's just not really accurate. Okay, I think so. Listen, I'll, it's I'll a simplification. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, Louis Farrakhan says a lot of the same stuff you say. Well, he says some things I agree, and I agree with any black person that wants to preserve their own heritage. I will come on overdrive. I'm willing to spend whatever time. We have a lot more to discuss. So let's let's do it. I'm ready to go. Well, we got to go to these calls, and I've got meetings, and I got to run this place and nightly news. So maybe we can go okay. 20 minutes to the next hour. Should take, I haven't taken a single call. Let's, let me let, let me take some calls. Yeah, let's go to Deutschland. Uh, let's talk to Eric from Germany via Skype. Uh, you're on the uh, air with David Duke. Go ahead. Hi. Well, it's a really interesting conversation and dialogue between you two. It's been fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the past year, uh, the United States population, 330 million, took on about 100,000 illegal immigrants. Um, Frau Merkel this year said that Germany, a population of 80 million, can take on 400,000 people from North Africa and the Middle East. I'm wondering what uh, Dr. Duke thinks about this, uh, and I also would love to hear his opinion about Vladimir Putin. And lastly, Alex, I love you, man. I listen to you every day. Uh, you rant about being anti-political correctness. I hate political correctness, but the past hour and a half, you've been super politically correct. And so uh, I just wanted to say that. Well, look, I, I, I appreciate Alex Jones having, having me on, and, and I, I really do, and it, was, it took a courageous act on his part to do that. Now, let me, let me answer the man's question. I travel a lot in Europe. I've spoken at universities all over Europe, both Eastern and Western Europe, and uh, I, Europe is in a crisis just like America. It's had the same leadership. In Germany, for instance, the head of the third largest party is a Jewish communist. Again, we go right back to that name, Geisy. And he literally said that he celebrates the fact that Germans aren't having kids, so no more Germans are going to be born so the Nazis can't come to power. That's how evil the situation we have going on in this country. Now, was there one bit of criticism in America about this planned genocide of the German people? Was there one criticism from any of the controlled politicians in Germany? No, there wasn't, because nobody dares criticize the, the real power in the world, and that's the Jewish supremacists. All right, caller from Germany, we're going to break. I thank you for your call. We're going to come back and talk to Kevin, Paul, Leslie, Mark, and others that are holding. Here's the kernel of what I want people to get from this last two hours with David Duke. I don't like gangs. I don't like people that organize just based on a flag. I find that generally produces a lot of oppression and tyranny. I'm into ideas. But what's shocking is MSNBC and CNN and the media is more racist and more out of control than David Duke by far. That shows how much trouble we're in and how mentally ill the left is. That's what's sick here is that these people want to bring this country down in a race war. In the next segment, I want to talk to David Duke about what his time in prison was like because... If you disagree with David Duke on a lot of points like I do, still, he was set up by the IRS. And now they're doing this to mainline groups, and that's the point. You let them do it to David Duke, they can do it to everybody. And I guess he'd argue he was thrown in a gulag like Alexander Schultz and Eatson. Uh, but I want to go to Dan, Kevin, Paul, 
Mark, Leslie, everybody in the time uh, we have left here. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Kevin in Canada. You're on the air. Hey, guys, can you hear me okay? Yep, go ahead. Perfect. Uh, David, uh, you probably don't know this, but uh, about a week ago, Alex had a gentleman on a show named Story Musgrave. Uh, during his show, Alex asked him, what's the best way forward for humanity? In which his response was, a one-world government. I would like to ask you the same question. What do you think is the best way forward for humanity? I think the best way forward to humanity, for humanity is to embrace the true principle of diversity. That is, just as in nature we have biodiversity, we have human diversity, every people must have the right to preserve their own heritage, to enshrine it, to, you know, to continue to raise it up. Every people has the right to exist. Every people's got the right to control their own affairs. The truth is that humanity is not all one. We are different. We, we are, we're all human, but we're very different in the way we look, the way we act, the way we feel, what the things we want for our society, our religious views. So true freedom is allowing every people to exist and survive. And, and if that's racism, well, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know what super racism is. The real racists are those who try to control the media of this country, this tiny, tiny minority who control the discourse, who control our academia like the Ivy League, who control broadcasting to a great extent, except there's some exceptions like Alex Jones. And I appreciate many things he does do. And that's, that's the oh, reality. Come on, so, David. You no, I, know you and your buddies behind the scenes or don't like me. No, I, no, listen, I don't have any dislike. You, you let me on. That's a lot more I can say for a lot of the mainstream media. And that took a lot of courage on your part. And I, I want to continue. I hope that my academic research and my book. So I got the secret behind communism. I'm going to send you a copy of that. And also your listeners, Jewish supremacism. This is documented with 600 different citations, which are literally showing the exact proof of what I'm saying. I can show you what's in the Talmud, the Jewish religious book, how that this idea of Jewish supremacy and control of the world has been around a long time. Ben Gurion, do you have, still have that graphic? For This is a good answer to the question, folks. This is, this is the world I don't want right now. I can show you. Ben Gurion. I have a graphic that I sent up to you of Ben Gurion. All right, Ben Gurion in a Look Magazine article, all right, literally gave his prediction. This is a fact that anybody can prove it. He literally said that there would be a new, truly united nations, and that Israel will be at the head of this global state. That Israel will build a shrine to the prophets, where the whole world will come and worship the Jewish prophets. And that in Israel, there would be a Supreme Court of mankind. They would abolish all armies and control the world. Now, this is not some obscure Jew. This is the most famous, the most respected Jew in the world. If Jews were not working toward this tribal dominance, why didn't they condemn Ben-Gurion for this pronouncement of Jewish globalist dominance? And if you look, look at the banks. You talk about banks every day, uh, and you should. But look at the bankers, the Rothschilds. They weren't just Rothschilds. They were part and parcel of the leading Jewish community, the Warburgs, the shift that supported communism. We, the, we can just go on and on. The Federal Reserve bankers that control and ruin this country. If, if, I just don't think it's possible to look at this thing rationally without seeing that there is a tribal connection. Man, I just, it's just Jew, 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 Jew. It's like the Catholic, okay. Catholic, Catholic thing. And then, or like the media promoting gay, gay, gay. It just gets old. It's, it's almost like people that are obsessed with this just have Jew on the brain. It gives me a headache. You're right. I really believe that the Jewish supremacist power in this world is the key issue to all of it. We wouldn't, the, the gun control groups overwhelmingly are led by Jews. The, 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 the lesbian, transgender groups are led by Jews. You, you can just keep going on it. The, the media that's, that, that's teaching. David all this. Duke's on the show. I tell you, man, I tell you, this is, we're going to come back with more phone calls. We'll be right back with Dan and others. Stay with us. Well, I got a lot of stuff to get done around the office of the Nightly News coming up tonight. But this is an important debate. We got loaded phone lines. We're David Duke. I'm Alex Jones. And I didn't even think of this. But Rob Jacobson is now the oldest employee of InfoWars who's been here continuously. Uh, so he's been here 10 years. Rob Jacobson. And, of course, we get the orders from Tel Aviv. They go through him. I'm, I'm joking. Uh, Rob Jacobson helped make Endgame. He helped make... So many of the big films that we've produced. He's one of our great video editors. He studies the New World Order. He exposes it. And he wants to talk to David Duke. Now, I don't know if David Duke's scared to talk to a Jewish person. 
Uh, I'm being sarcastic. You may think he's going to grow vampire fangs or something. But, uh, Rob, I didn't even think of this. In fact, next time David Duke's on, we ought to get you in here in studio so you can talk to him and, you know, uh, make your own points. But but you've studied the Federal Reserve. And that's a point I didn't make earlier, that a lot of the people that founded the Federal Reserve, some were Jewish, some weren't. They ended up funding fascism, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. And that's something David said earlier, that no, there's no connection to Nazis trying to take over America. No, I said fascist. The McCormick-Dickstein Committee exposed that. There was a major pro-Nazi movement here in the U.S. The Bushes were involved. And next time Duke comes on, we can debate that further. But, but I need to go to these calls, too. But, Rob Jacobson, you wanted to talk to David Duke. Yeah, yeah, I was just curious. Thanks, Alex. Uh, I was just curious. Um, I, I heard all this uh, conversation during the radio show today. And, you know, uh, Mr. Duke seems to be pretty educated in a lot of uh, parts of the world. And you guys were... Uh, talking about bankers. So I was just curious if he could explain to me which one of these bankers is the Jew of maybe the uh, founders, maybe the guys of the Jekyll Island, you know. I'll just name them off, and as soon as the Jew is there, the hidden guy, you know, whatever. He could, he could just educate us, I feel. Is Nelson Aldrich Jewish, Mr. Uh, Duke? Duke? No. No. I don't think so. Okay. How about... Abraham, Pyatt, Andrew. We, we want to name some of the Jewish names, or just going to name the No, Gentiles? I'm just curious, because you seem to think you know, that Jews are almost completely responsible something. for we everything know. that's wrong in the world that I don't really... I think Rob's think that, point is, I think there's only one guy that's Jewish on the list. Rob there knows. is, there is Let one me guy. The question. Let me answer the question this way, okay? Okay. You've talked a lot about the most powerful banking family in the world historically has been the Rothschilds. And the, the six sons of the Rothschilds went to six different countries and led the banking institutions of those countries. In this country, the most powerful capitalist banker by far was Jacob Schiff. He literally financed the Russian Revolution and ultimately caused the death of tens of millions of Christians. The Federal Reserve for the last three decades has only had Jewish supremacists, Jewish extremists, as head of the Federal Reserve, who support all the major Jewish organizations, which oppose all the principles that Alex Jones talks about. Yeah, here. but Mr. Duke, sure. this is not the origin of this place. You're you're hey, definitely cherry picking history here picking because to support your side of history. Let's go further. Let's talk about the original 1929 Big Six. Which one of them are Jewish? I mean, these are the guys that started. Let me ask a question. All right, listen. I think Jekyll Island was set up to try to get in as much of Gentile collaborators. There have always been Gentile collaborators, but you, there's no way to deny the fact that the international, the most powerful predator bank on planet Earth, who's practically picks the members of our Federal Reserve, picks the members of our Treasury Department, is the biggest contributor for presidents of the United States, both Republicans and Democrats. The biggest single corporate contributor is Goldman Sachs. But this Mr. is recent history. But this Goldman is very Sachs is more of a socialist movement. Yeah, well, this is this is within the last twenty five years or thirty five years. This doesn't. Our, this isn't like uh, deep rooted stuff. This whole system was set up by the Rothschilds. This whole system, you could say that. I mean, but you could also say that the Rockefellers contributed to that, and so did Andrew Mellon. Yeah, let me ask you this Carnegie's. question: What about the Rockefellers and the Nazis? Because the Rockefellers worked with the Rothschilds. In my experience, the Rothschilds helped start some stuff in Israel, but they just play both sides. I see the Rothschilds as really. Just uh, very uh, sociopathic. Rothschilds, by the way, bought off Winston Churchill as a young boy. They used to they they financed his kit when he went to South Africa. The Rothschilds gave him a huge wedding present to his wife and kids. They they were developing uh, Churchill because he was an aristocratic Gentile, and they know to advance their program, they've got to have Gentiles involved. And Churchill drove Europe into a war. A horrific war that killed 54 million Americans, um, excuse me, Europeans, and also caused the you know the takeover of half of Europe by communists, which at that time had a lot of Jews involved, and they also basically took over the West. This war was a catastrophe. So there are Gentile collaborators, but if the Jews don't run the insiders, the elite of the world, then why is it that Israel, Israel's a law right now, where it's against the law for a Jew to marry a non-Jew? If any American, any European, any Canadian proposed a law where it's against the law to marry a Jew or against the law to marry a well, non-Jew. It's like an anchor baby the thing. They say guest workers can't marry How? someone to be able to stay there. We have similar laws here for sham no. marriages. Well, but this, let me answer the question. If any country of the European world had tried to pass such a law, 
If that happened, you know that they would be demonized. They'd practically call for sanctions against the country. They'd practically invade them uh, for that reason. But Israel can do it. So why is it that the only people allowed to preserve their heritage and push for their power over all of us? Sure, but let me throw this out there. I got corrected on this because I saw a leftist publication reporting that years ago. And then I read deeper into it. They have sham marriages where people pay to get in as a guest worker. Then they marry somebody so they can stay in the country and get welfare. It's the same thing as anchor babies. And then the media spins that, that it's a race law. Israel is even using DNA to determine who their, who their immigrants are going to be. DNA. I mean, my God. Israel is a racist supremacist state. They have segregated schools, segregated developments, segregated housing. They've ethnically cleansed 600,000 Palestinians. They massacre them. They burn them. They kill whole neighborhoods. Right, yeah, but that doesn't and prove there's the no fact. sanctions against Israel. So that if doesn't, I mean, a, a lot of these groups, a lot of these groups are are actually. You know, we, we could talk about groups from every single uh, uh, ethnic group of the world and have similar evidence. What you're saying doesn't definitively prove, and you're also not including the place where a lot of these Jewish leaders intermingle with a lot of the Catholic and Protestant leaders and all the other leaders of the world. Uh, let's stop right there. We got to go to calls, David. I promise. You I'll have you back, and then would you like to debate Rob Jacobson next time you come back? Any time, because I can show. Then, then maybe that's the problem of why you're not talking more about the Jewish issue, because some of these Jews, they pretend to be on our, our side, but they won't recognize Jewish racism. They won't recognize I mean, the fact that every major Jewish... That's not fair, of what you're saying. Well, Rob is my what boss, saying, David. I'm, saying, I mean, I'm I asking you, my... Mr. Duke, to broaden <laughs> your mind, because what I'm saying is I recognize everything you're saying, and I'm saying... Let's go a step beyond that and look at the true group that's behind this. And that's an intermingling of who you're saying, as well as Catholic and Protestant and all world leaders who intermingle. Well, exactly. It's like the Masonic groups. secret societies have roots in Israel, Babylon, Greece, Rome. And of course, there's a Jewish Again, element to it because, so because, because I mean, your name's David, is, David. That's a Jewish name. It's part of our culture. If the Masonics are behind it, then, according to your reasoning. I don't say that. Masonic specifically. I'm just saying... There are groups out there where these people intermingle, and we it's have all like merged. Bohemian Grove, for example. Uh, these these men intermingle every single summer, and they discuss policy as well as creative ideas and scientific development every summer. And it, yeah, there are some Jews that go there, but guess what? And they've They're, had presidents and people say that more gets done there than anywhere else. That's all we're saying is that, of course, there's powerful Jewish lobbies and, and defense lobbies, and we're not debating that. It's okay. just that. All I ever hear out of people is Jew, 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 and then and then they make stuff about me and claim that Jews are running what I do, and it, it's just crazy. I think Jews run what you do. I'd like to take some calls, but you know if you're just going to run over me, I don't need to be here. I'd love to take some calls from the callers. Well, David, we're not running over. You've talked as much as we have. No, Rob, no, Rob got to talk maybe three minutes total. You got to talk an hour. You respond to what, what the Jewish individual said here. He said, well, but he's intermingling and everything in Israel. Why is it, if, 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 if it's truly not a matter of the supremacy of the Jews and the international globalists, then why is it that, there's the question, an open question, why is it that Israel is the only country on earth right now that allows segregated settlements, that Israel's the only country that can ban marriage between a Jew and a non-Jew by the basis of... Yeah, of I think that's wrong, and that's yeah. why you've gotten calls of, of apartheid and stuff. And a lot why, of it is Israel uh, is has... It, with the Palestinians and get away with... It. Hey, David Duke, you've been yeah. given... Let's just be clear today here, for the record. You've okay. talked more than I've talked. You've talked more than everybody else. You keep implying you're being cut off. You keep implying you're being run over. And it's just not an accurate... Uh, truthful statement. You have been given a ton of time here. And well, so let's just stop judge. making those false claims. Well, the audience will judge anyway, but I'll just take some calls. I mean, oh, I know. Like, I know all your buddies will bitch and whine that well, you, that, 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 because normally everybody falls down and worships you. But the point I, is, is that you did. The, the fact is you got to talk more than I did. And, and so just stop claiming we're running over you because Rob came in here uh, you know, and well, talk maybe, to you. Maybe that's true. Well, we can, after we have the tape, we can, we can time it and see. And whatever <laughs> the situation, all I know is that a lot of times when we have the question, like when he was asking a question, I really wasn't allowed to answer it. He kept saying about Jews intermingle and all this other stuff, but they, they, they the every major Jewish organization is promoting immigration into America, but they support Israel, which has the strictest immigration policies of the world. How does Israel get away with it if the media is truly uh, for open borders? All right, let's go to calls.
Paul in New... No, no, no. Up next is Dana Montana. Dana Montana, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, this is a great interview. Uh, I want to say, I'm going to change the channel a little bit, and I want to know David Duke's opinion on what's happening in Russia. I know that on his website, he did. It's all Zionist, Zionist, and I understand, I believe, the Zionists to be the globalist and y'all to have the same enemy, uh, but you can't see eye to eye. But I want to know why he never talks about this group that is this racist group that's helping the Ukraine in Kiev jerk people out of buildings in South Ossetia or, or in, in, the, in these uh, Odessa and beating them with clubs. But we're not getting his take on that. If he was with the nationalist movement here, the white nationalist movement here, then why, well, why is he not an intermediary, at least in having some type of interviews, uh, something going on with the white nationalists there? That's another thing. It's because it's we got George Soros financing known white supremacists in Ukraine to attack the Russian-held areas uh, there in eastern Ukraine, there in the Crimea. Undoubted fascist right wing, Heiling Hitler. Uh, why, again, would George Soros be funding that? Well, let me answer, let me answer the question very clearly. Uh, if you listen to my radio show, and by the way, those listening to this show, I'm on every day, Monday through Friday, at 10 o'clock Central Time, 11 o'clock Eastern Time. And I've talked no less than about three or four dozen times about the Ukraine and about Russia and all what's going on here. And I think that Russia is a target, again, going right back to it, because they dare to stand up for the Syrians and the Christians in Syria and the anti-ISIS forces in Syria. The reason we've supported ISIS is because Israel saw Syria as an enemy and the Christians of Syria as well who support Assad and support the government because, is, because Syria has supported the Palestinians. Same thing's true with the Lebanese. But same speak to Soros and the left funding right-wingers Answer that question. Explain why they're anti-Russian. Now, I have also talked about, I've taught, had many Because shows. Soros, this isn't about being Jewish for him. He's a dirtbag who likes to go around doing criminal That's stuff. Totally about being Jewish for Mr. Soros. And Mr. Soros is an absolute Jewish supremacist. Why is he funding white supremacists then? Because no, he's what he's doing. He'll, they'll go, they'll support any side if they think it can get their individual tactics. The reason they hate <sighs> Russia. Is because Russia is upsetting their apple cart in the Middle East. Russia supported the Syrians. Israel doesn't like Syria, even though it's not jihadist. It's not terrorist. There's been no terrorists from the from the from the Syrian government to attack America. Syria is the only country fighting them, and Russia has supported them. So they the, Russia has been has stymied the Zionist position of the United Nations. That's why they hate Russia. Now, no, I hear you, and they're using white supremacists as usual. How many, was, what, what percentage of white supremacists and white nationalists do you think are really FBI agents or informants like Hal Turner? And that's a problem because uh, European nationalists can be used by those people if they don't understand the end game here. I talked about Barbara Newland, the Jewish undersecretary of state that said F Europe, you know, that wanted this war. Is I Hillary Jewish? What? Hillary's not Jewish, but let me tell you, her and, and Clinton have taken uh, the Marine newspaper in Israel had a big article, one of the leading Israeli daily. Here's my problem. All I know is the Jews I know are fighting GMO. They're fighting tyranny. They're fighting open borders. They're fighting banning the word mom and dad. I mean, take Matt Drudge. He's he's Jewish and he fights the whole New World Order agenda. I mean, most of the Jews I know are fighting the New World Order. And then all I hear about is how Jews are evil all day. It, it, it just becomes a giant distraction. They believe the media is on the side of, of, of bringing out Monsanto. Of course not. The, the Jewish Drudge control, is linked to our articles fighting Monsanto. There are Jews fighting Monsanto, but the overwhelming Jewish power structure, you don't find any organization like the leading Jewish organizations condemning Monsanto. Right, we got to go to more calls. We got to go to more calls. And nobody's censoring you. We got to go to calls. Paul in New Jersey, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, good afternoon, gentlemen. Yeah, you have a good discussion there, but people don't realize we were communists before the communists were in 1913, and we set up the communists right in New York City and, and sent them on a boat to Trotskyites across and right through World War One. They said, don't touch this railroad here. We're going to take these communists, set up the communist revolution. Yep. That's how that started. And the big banksters, what is the biggest ongoing robbery in the history of time? Can you answer that question? Well, I, I think the Federal Reserve is. Absolutely. Yeah, well, they're, they're controlled. Yeah, they get, their, they get their dollar bills for like two cents, and they loan them back to our government for face value plus interest.
You're right. And all the it's money not- it goes for the income tax, you they collect for the unlawful income tax. Well, there's no so- doubt we're under bondage. And I just want to cut past all the names and all the race stuff that the social engineers want us to obsess over and just say, no more private Federal Reserve, no more end of national sovereignty, get us out of the U.N., cut taxes, and then I can sell everybody, whether they're Jewish or German or Chinese on that, and we can all live happily ever after. I mean, that's why some of the corrupt elements in Israel and others have been caught bombing their own synagogues in Iraq to make folks move to Israel. That's not all the Jews doing that. It's corrupt groups. Our, our elites do the same things. It's like Frank Underwood throwing a brick through his own window. I mean, it's just human activity is all I'm saying. Thank you, Paul. Leslie in South Carolina, you're on the air with David Duke. Go ahead. Mr. Duke, I am enjoying your conversation immensely. I have to ask you a question. Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. So you've taken Christ into your heart as your Savior? Yes, I have, ma'am. Okay, so have I. Um, and his first name is David, or... the king of the <laughs> Jews, the first, I mean, the super Jew. Well, I, can't, I can't be responsible because for my first name. I didn't name myself. My, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> a Christian family and, uh, and so forth, but I can tell you, I can tell you this, that the, the truth is that the greatest enemy of Christianity has, from the very beginning, and you just read the, the, the New Testament and you'll see it, has been the organized Jewish community. They were the ones, in fact, to crucify Jesus Christ. Well, the Pharisees were always going after uh, any other new group of ideas that came out. I mean, that's true. And, and I mean, Christ well, was like challenging Christ that. Because he wasn't preaching Jewish supremacy. That's what the real problem they had with Jesus Christ. They supported Barabbas, a Jewish revolutionary and a Jewish supremacist, rather than Jesus. So that, that's how that see how that turned out 70 years later with Titus. Okay, uh, Leslie, thank you. Mark in Oregon, you're on the air with David Duke. We're hurrying now. Hello, Alex and David. Uh, please let me uh, preface the short one-minute statement that I have okay, go here. ahead. Uh, by saying that actually I was born a Torah Jew as opposed to a Satanic Talmudic Jew, a non-Jew, actually. And I was raised as such. Now, as usual, when I hear disagreements among those in the alternative patriot Christian movement and media, I notice that the areas of disagreement are much smaller than the areas of commonality, which are potentially massive in power when proactively united. Now, Tex Mars, gentlemen, he has researched genetic studies of the population of the country of Israel which concluded that only 4% of the population of the country of Israel have Jewish blood. This, of course, brings up this massive element, elephant in this particular room of discussion. In the near future, I think you should both elucidate upon the topic of the Kazarian aspect of, as Jesus Christ called them, you Jews who are not Jews, the synagogue of Satan, you are of your father the devil. These Zionist Khazarians are whom David speaks of, and they of whom the Rothschilds are a part do at least... Okay, well, I have basis. seen... I got to jump, Mark, but I appreciate your call. I mean, undoubtedly, the, the Sephardic Jews clearly are the people that are the oldest bloodline there, but I think David would argue that, no, all these people are Jewish. David, briefly, what's your take on that? And I want to get Jacobson's well, take. First off, I want to say, i got to preface this by saying I just love Tex Mars. I think he's a, a great and honest and wonderful Christian man. I do have a disagreement with him on that particular study. There have been huge genetic studies that Christian Jews in Russia are six times closer genetically to, to Jews who are Sephardic. These are Ashkenazi Jews, Sephardic Jews in, say, Spain, than they are from, say, fellow, fellow Russians. And the truth is the Talmud. You talked about the Satanic Talmud and the Jewish establishment. Just don't forget that the Talmud was finally codified in the 6th century AD. Now, that was hundreds of years before the alleged Khazaric conversion. So I used to believe in the Khazar theory, but I don't believe in it. And I think most of those who are promoting the theory, and a lot of our people have done so not knowing the truth, have promoted it. And it's actually beneficial to them because it's trying to say we're not the real Jews. But Judaism and the Jews have really been an enemy of Jesus Christ. They've been an enemy of, uh, of, of the rest of mankind for a long time. The Talmud- right, we got to end it right there. I'm sorry, the other callers. I want to give Rob Jacobson, the evil, evil person, I'm being sarcastic, uh, a return comment to you, and you can say something back to him, David. Go ahead, Jacobson. All right. Um, I, when it comes to uh, that history of the Jewish people, I, I don't know uh, that much. But what I am aware of is, of course, like any other group, I— there's going to be a corruption of people who are, you know, rise to the top, an elite of this group who do dirty, corrupt things for their own benefit, just like any other group. 
But what I did notice about uh, Mr. Duke's uh, response is he did find a convenient way, of course, to dismiss whatever history there is and, you know, go along with his entire dialogue again, you know, without even, you know, it's like, oh, I don't believe it. It's not this. And I think that that kind of rhetoric and that kind of discussion is should be also taken into account. And All the right, fact that this will might happen. Be Duke will come back, Jacobson, and you'll be able for 30 minutes, uh, you know, actually debate him on the points. And then maybe Duke can recommend who we can have on the debate with him. But David Duke, I think uh, it was an interesting interview today. Two and a half hours you spent with us. Uh, lots of plugs for you. But you'll yep. get to be the victim uh, and claim I censored you. Tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, all right, yeah. So, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, David Duke, very, very wolf-like. Nice little friendly wolfie. My what big eyes he has. We're out of time, folks. God bless you all.